What's up, how you doing today, February 1st, 2023? Beautiful day, perfect weather, um, clear sky, very nice out. So, <clears throat> gotta make a meal here, very simple. New York strip, uh, organic. Got it wrapped up here like a mummy. This is lunch. Um, tonight is spaghetti night, Wednesday, and I got some really good uh, ground beef. Really good ground beef. Good sauce, too. So, this is a very good cut. Tough to get a grip on. Get that. So just salt and pepper. I do not disguise the flavor of meat. You know what I've discovered in recent years, maybe, I don't know, maybe like eight years now, on occasion, I will have a good supply of grapeseed leaves, grapeseed leaves, and I, I rinse them off well, raw, and you cut your steak up, get a piece of steak in your mouth, and a nice uh, leaf. I have some inside, I have a couple of packets. Now, I don't know, they're not that expensive, but when I went to buy some the other day, in a Korean store. I got two packages. And then I looked at it and I said to the uh, lady, I said, uh, I'll take two more. And she said to me, are you sure? She goes, very expensive. And I was thinking in my head, you know, uh, you don't want the business here. They're not that expensive. It's like four bucks. So she made it sound like, you know, I, I said, give me two packets and uh, they were like maybe a thousand dollars each. I said, no, it's okay. I don't want to keep coming back here. So, big fan of that. I was over at a friend of ours' house, like eight years back, and we were having dinner there, and they brought some uh, meat that was cut up, and then they had a plate of grapeseed leaves. And I said, oh, I guess you take a little, little steak uh, and a little of this and put them together and chew them up. So I did, and I, I really liked it. So. I have uh, on occasion continued the practice. So salt and pepper. Pack it down. Flip it over. Salt. Pack it. Now, I'm going to let it sit for about an hour. So let the salt sit there for about an hour. And then I will cook it for approximately five minutes per side. Five minutes. Do not overcook your steaks. You ruin them that way. I remember the movie Rocky where um, Paulie is working at the meat shop there, the meats, the slaughterhouse. I don't think it's a slaughterhouse, I think it's a meat processing plant. And then Rocky shows up and uh, Paulie cuts a 
piece of steak for him and, and wraps it up, kind of like the way I wrapped it up now. It's very uh, kind of like uh, amateuristic wrap. He just does this, does a couple of things, and hands it to Rocky, and Rocky, I don't know what he puts it under his armpit or something, or he, he takes it and leaves with it. And uh, I was like, doesn't this guy know how to wrap the meat up properly? So uh, yeah, he says, uh, good friends never tasted this good, I'm talking about the cattle in there. So anyway, I want to put this inside for about an hour, and then I shall cook it. I'll be right back. I'm going to get a nice cold glass of ice water, and uh, I will return in a moment. All right, I'm back. Uh, I was going to get ice water, and then I changed my mind. Changed my mind. Lipton. Love Lipton tea. I will say that uh, years ago they had a commercial, they had several co commercials with Don, I think his name was Don Meredith, and they couldn't have made a better choice for a spokesman for Lipton Tea. He convinced me that Lipton was the way to go and uh, I'd say 75% of the tea I drink is Lipton. Love Lipton. Iced tea, cold, frozen, hot steaming whatever Lipton uh, these come they don't individually wrap them anymore they come in a a packet that is I don't know what that is like uh, some kind of plastic tin foil I don't know so uh, it smells delicious America's favorite tea, it says. So, put it in here. Hot water. Um, I don't add milk. Unnecessary. It says picked at the peak of freshness, naturally smooth taste, or smooth. Just bought this the other day, expires uh, May 21st, 2024. Plenty of time to, uh, to drink this. Get a little spin, let it sit there for a little bit. I'll say it again, but in my family, the older generation, like my parents' age, they would only drink tea if they were sick. They didn't have it like a normal, you know, day-to-day -day thing like I do. If you if you say to my mother, uh, you want to make some tea, she'd be like, yeah, I'm not sick, I don't have a cold. And I said, I didn't say you had a cold, I said, do you want some tea? You know, I don't know where they get the idea that you only have that, like it's medicine or something makes you feel better when you have a cold, but that is not the only time that you drink tea. Fire engine going by. Two of them. So, and I have a, one of my favorite knife companies, made in Sweden. Um, it's relatively inexpensive but it's it's a good knife to have in your car get an accident seat belt jams on you which is extremely rare you have one of these cut free no problem more a knife more uh, knives not bad Carbon steel, um, sharp, very sharp, and made in Sweden, way up north. Good thickness there. But you know, not just for seat belts, anything. Got it backwards here. Yeah. I actually have a leather case inside that, you know, goes with this. But this is fine.
get all the flavor out of there. Then I got my magazine here. I love magazines. Uh, I can't tell you how many magazines I get every month. I love magazines because the information in magazines is up to date, up to date. I like books also, but uh, magazines are, you know, more up to date. And this one here is Movie Maker. On the uh, on the cover, it's Michael B. Jordan, and it says directs Creed Three. So I am looking forward, forward looking to the movie Creed being released in March. Creed 3. I've uh, been a big fan of the Rocky movies, the spin-offs, ever since I was that big. Um, delicious but I've been a boxing fan way before Rocky ever came out my father and I would sit in the kitchen and we'd watch Muhammad Ali fights when I was younger and then when I got a little bit older we'd watch every championship fight I don't think there's a championship fight in those days that we missed watch them all I remember when they were free ABC had them on for free and then this new concept came out, pay-per-view. Um, and still we'd get them. So, talks about Creed 3 in here. Which, Sylvester Stallone is not part of. I don't know, there was some kind of falling out. Some kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, Stallone got pissed off because they wouldn't give him part ownership of uh, the Rocky franchise, something happened. And I don't know if that's the norm, if, you know, because you acted in it and wrote it, that you also deserve ownership. I think the people that own it put more money in and uh, took more of a risk and, you know, but I understand what he's saying. You know, he's uh, the, the creator of the characters and he deserves to have a piece of the pie. So, but, you know, Whoever has the piece now doesn't want to give any of it up. And why should they, right? So this was supposed to be released. It was supposed to be released in October when it just passed. And then they postponed it to March. A lot of people were speculating that there were issues with the movie and it wasn't that good. But I don't know. I don't know if that's the case. I've I've seen the trailer, and the trailer looks good to me. It looks good to me, and I haven't read this yet, but quite lengthy, so I'm very excited about that. It's got a lot of information here. And like I said, uh, the trailer is very good. Makes it look like a very interesting movie. And I like this uh, actor that plays Adonis, Michael B. Jordan. I still don't know whatever happened to the other children that Apollo had. The two, the boy and the girl there with his wife. I wonder if they address that in this movie, if they say, you know, they uh, they moved on and they live in Antarctica now. But they never, uh, in the other two movies, they haven't mentioned them. And we all know that Apollo had a boy and a girl because they show them in Rocky II. That scene where he's reading the hate mail, Apollo's reading the hate mail, you can see the children downstairs playing. So I don't know, maybe they just ignore the whole thing as if it never happened like they did on Happy Days with the older brother. Richard Cunningham had an older brother, Chuck I think was his name, and then they got rid of him and they never once mentioned him again just vanished so yeah there's a few movies that I wait for this is one of them you know if they announce tomorrow that a a Rambo you know number what are we now uh, six right Rambo six I'm very happy very happy I don't I don't care how ridiculous it is I just go for the uh, 
bit of nostalgia, you know. But I, I go for the character, see what's going on. I mean, obviously, the last one I thought was a bit over the top and ridiculous. The guy tore the heart out of the enemy in his uh, apartment there, basement, whatever that was, barn. <sighs> what else? <sighs> Looking forward to you two. They have a new album, should be complete by now. Maybe they're done mixing, I don't know. But last I read about it was that it was gonna be a bit of a, like a heavy metal sounding album, which is interesting to me. Now, I'm not really a heavy metal guy. I like some of it, but you know, that's not really my category of music. Although I do listen to everything. I listen to everything. Old, new, uh, rock, dance, R&B country you name it I even mama's boy with the loud muffler that's how they compensate it's a Joe Pesci syndrome but anyway um, so I listen to all that kind of music and I was gonna say as a matter of fact I also I'm into Cambodian rock and roll that came on the 60s. There's a interesting uh, history to that music. A lot of those, well, not a lot, all of them, all of those artists that uh, were Cambodian rock singers in those days vanished without a trace. They vanished. They were killed. I mean, when they say vanished, they were they were killed. Um, but they recently, in recent years, uh, this is a few years now, but. Um, they released Cambodian rock and roll from the 60s, and I go, ah, let me, uh, I'll give it a shot. I was reading a review on one of my magazines, in one of my magazines, and it got me interested and curious at the same time. So I went to the local uh, record store up here, which I was there yesterday, and I bought two of them, which is all they had. I mean, two different uh, CDs, not two of the same. And I got into my motor car and I pressed play and I said, this is good stuff. I said it to myself, not bad. And even now, you know, if I bump into the CD somewhere in the house, I'll put it in and uh, listen to it. I really like it. It's uh, good material, but all those people, they vanished. Um, now, you know, when, when the uh, release date comes and goes, that they don't release it on the day they said originally, I'm all pissed off, angry about it. I'm like, oh man, I could have gone and seen that. But then when enough time goes by, I'm happy that they didn't release because now I got something else to look forward to. So in March, I will go see this with my family. You know, one thing that annoys me about Rocky he gives misinformation of how it is you get sick in the wintertime. Rocky one, he goes into the pet shop there with Adrian and he says, cold night, good night to catch pneumonia. You do not catch pneumonia because it's cold out. That annoys me when people say that. If you don't come in contact with the microorganism that causes you to get sick, you will not get sick. You will get hypothermia, frostbite, something like that from the cold, but not pneumonia, not the common cold. I mean, people need to update themselves. That really annoys me. That's like spreading misinformation. That's not accurate to say, oh, it's cold out, you're gonna catch a cold. That's what they call it, but it's not because it's cold out. You can be in Hawaii, it could be 85 degrees and get the flu. And it has nothing to do with uh, fluctuation of temperature either. Ah, oh, man, that's delicious. Not a cloud in the sky, but uh, they said it's going to get windy over the weekend. And windy Monday, too. But right now it's slightly breezy. That enjoyable breeze. I remember when I turned 11 years old and I was fascinated. I go, 1 1, 11. And I was walking home from school. It was a nice day out and I passed a house and the guy was cutting his grass and I stopped there and I was smelling 
the cut grass smell, which is not bad. And he kind of finished up, and then he came over and he talked to me for a few minutes. He was like, how are you doing? I said, good, today's my birthday. And he said, oh, happy birthday. I said, I'm 11. So he said, good. And uh, we talked for a minute or two. I was enjoying the smell in the air. And then I walked to my house. My grandma, actually, I was going to my grandmother's house that day. <sighs> Took my grandmother one time uh, to a walk at the railroad tracks. And she was old at the time. And I said, ah, don't worry, come this way. And it was a steep dirt road that we had to go down very steep I had her grabbing on branches and stuff and she made it down she's like where are you taking me and I said just stop complaining and come with me I want to show you something and I showed her the railroad tracks and she said this is great here she goes I never knew this existed meantime she lived like five blocks away from the uh, the railroad tracks but she never knew because they kind of hidden behind homes so you don't see them unless you, you walk on them and I was uh, still am a train tracks expert big fan of those and I took her there and she was walking and she was uh, picking flowers on the side that was her thing stop and pick things and then she was all into it she was very uh, grateful that I took her there to see these train tracks I was at the train tracks the other day I love the train tracks especially freight train tracks although I like the trolley train tracks that Mr. Rogers had in his house I had a dream when I was a kid that I found his house and somehow I got in and he wasn't home and I started messing around with all that stuff. I went to the kitchen, I grabbed all the uh, little miniature neighborhood of make believe um, models and then I went where the trolley is and I hit the buttons down by where he sits and the trolley came out and I took the trolley off the tracks and I was checking it out and there was no one there and then I got on the tracks myself and I kind of, you know, crawled all the way until I ended up to the neighborhood of Make Believe. There was maybe like a half a mile of darkness. Finally, I made it there and I was exploring and I ended up at King Friday's castle inside. I was exploring inside. Then I went to the uh, ex the owl, the tree house with uh, Meow 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 next to him. And then Lady Elaine Fairchild, I went to that museum go round. Uh, and then there was a, a scene where I was at the, the platypuses area. But yeah, big fan of that show, big fan. I always thought that he had a, that was a secret home away from his wife. Like his, he was married with a family and then he would get into it with the wife and he had a secret home that she didn't know about and then he would show up there and then when he would calm down from the temper, then he'd go back home. That's what I thought back then. So <clears throat> that's it. In a little bit, I'm gonna cook my steak. LAPD flying by on their helicopter. I'd like to get a ride in that thing. You know what I'd really like to get a ride in? Goodyear Blimp. Which I know where it lands, down in Carson. I've been there many times, I've shot video there, I've walked around the property, and there's the blimp in the middle. But somebody said to us that you have to know somebody, you just can't go up there and buy tickets. You have to know somebody. And I don't know somebody that knows somebody to get me in that thing. But I would love to get in that Goodyear blimp and fly around the city. They fly in slow motion. Like a big lazy, you know, elephant going by. Sometimes I see it over my house. Here. Just going by. One time, one weekend, uh, it was like a Saturday. The thing was hovering, doing circles, right up above us. Like all day, all day. And I was here watching it. I go, that's like a spy thing, keeping an eye on me. Anyway, <sighs> make some tea and see what I'm talking about. I don't know what it is, but they have the right, the right blend Lipton. There's other teas that are much more expensive. They taste great, but Lipton has the perfect flavor. They should call me up, I'll be like a spokesman for them, make a couple of commercials, talk about drinking Lipton. Okay, that's it, I'm out.